to the episode of the Nerdy Brigade. Just me, I have. Donald. Scotty. Brody. And I welcome you all back to another episode of our Global Tier List podcast. And now today we are continuing the Childhood Marathon with one of my movies, uh, my second movie, which is the Sonic the Hedgehog original OVA, which I believe was like 1999-ish. Um, so we are going to do our predictions right now, and then we're going to watch the movie off screen. If you want to see the movie, watch it on your own time, and then we are going to do our raw reviews afterwards and place it on the tier list, like we always do. Um, as for this film, it's only an hour long, so you don't need to worry about spending a lot of time if you do want to watch it in between. I mean, an hour is still a while, but shorter than most films. Um, and as for those predictions, let's get into them right now. So first person up is actually Donnie. Tyler said that he, re- he recently watched some clips and it was not as good as he remembered. Which makes me sad, because this is probably going to be a bad movie on the bad end. So, probably... Ooh, uh, you know what? I'm gonna put it below clutch power just to spite Tyler. Okay. So if history has taught me anything, <clears throat> Super Mario Brothers, um, this movie will not be very good. Uh, personally, I'm not a huge Sonic fan. I mean, I don't hate it, but I didn't like, grow up on it like I know Tyler did. Um, so that also might make this a little bit more sour in my eyes. However. I don't even want to say this movie can't be as bad as Mario Bros. Because it totally can. But, but uh, I'm going to hold out hope for it, and I'm going to predict it at bottom D. Um, on one hand, I'm kind of intrigued. But on the other hand, um, I am so much very fearful of this movie. I am cowering in my... Uh, I'm shaking in my big boots. Um, because it's not my first experience with uh, Sonic... Uh, movies, let alone just Sonic the franchise, and it's a real hit or miss. Or from what I've seen, it's a real hit or miss thing. Um, so I mean, I think it'll be like above the original King or above the original Godzilla versus King Kong, right there. Yeah. And as for myself, I'm the only person who has seen this movie before. And, oh god, oh god, dude, it is, it is rough, uh, from what I remember, and from the tiny clips I saw. So, I think the, I think the big problem with this film, honestly, is that the characters' voices are super annoying in the English dub. Like, this is just a warning to you guys. Like, uh, Tails sounds like shit, the girl character, she sounds like shit, and, uh, I'm not gonna spoil who it is, but one character does talk at one point, his voice is also shit. Um, and it's just really annoying. The only people who are doing, like, good performances are Eggman, and sometimes Sonic doesn't sound terrible, but a bunch of the other times he does sound terrible. From what I can remember, the animation is really, really, really good. The story is pretty simple, but pretty lighthearted and fun, and it's generally simple. There's, like, one, I remember there's, like, one what-the-fuck character that you don't even know why he's in the movie, and he's, like, the weirdest thing about this entire film for me, and also that Knuckles has an Indiana Jones hat for some reason, um, but... It's... it's whatever. I really hope it's not as bad as y'all are saying, but it totally could be, and that makes me kind of sad. Um, because there are legitimately a lot of points in this film that I really enjoy, but a lot of those moments that I enjoy are back in the day when my brain wasn't developed enough, so I was looking at scenes that were trying to have emotional weight, and in reality they don't have any emotional weight, but my little child brain is like, oh my god. Um, so... Yeah, it's... Is, is gonna be rough. Honestly, my hopes is that this is a C tier. That is my hope. I don't think it, it, there's no way it can go any higher. My hope is that it's like below Shark Tales. But where I really think it's gonna stick is like, uh, honestly, where Brody put it, like right around here ish. If y'all really get annoyed by the shit that's in this film. But that's, that's it. That's about as expected. But. <clears throat> Alrighty then, so now with our predictions out of the way, we're going to get on to watching the movie, and you all can stick around for our raw reviews. All right. I wonder if this is going to be better or worse than the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX dub. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty shitty, and I watched like two seasons of that. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going off of an educated guess that they're both bad. They are. <laughs> yeah, they are. 
we just finished watching the movie, and now we're going to go on to our raw reviews. Again, this is like literally five seconds after we finished, so some of the stuff we might say may be nonsensical, and we might ramble quite a fair bit, but, you know, it's just how we do things here. Um, it's called a podcast, dumbass. Well, I mean, it's in the name. Um, and speaking of Scott here, he uh, you're up first, actually, on the reviews, so go away. I'm, I'm going to eat it off D tier, and then you're good to go. Yep. Hit. Um... This movie, I'm so very glad that for once, one of these childhood movies didn't didn't disappoint, didn't completely shit the bed. Now, I we the movie opened up, and that first scene was not a great first impression. I mean, I don't hate the visual style. I think that's fine. I definitely see what Tyler you were saying at first with the voices, especially Tails' voice. Was like, man, this could definitely get on my nerves. Um, but it really wasn't. It wasn't bad. Uh, I, I know enough about Sonic to like understand all the characters and like what was going on, which I liked. I didn't have to. I, like, I wasn't super confused because I didn't know the lore. Although, well, that's a different discussion. But um, no, I think it was. It was a. F fun movie um definitely a, a kid type movie i mean didn't have a ton of complexity a ton of stuff to it um but overall i think it was fine uh i think the the robotnik or eggman or whatever um was as far as like movie villains go kind of wonky but as far as like Robotnik goes, I'm it, that's correct me if I'm wrong, but that's like kind of his point. Um, and I think that was fine. Uh, I think it was decent action with him. Uh, the whole princess or hostage or just woman situation didn't really make sense, and that was never really addressed. Uh, because the movie cut off so <laughs> abruptly, so that was cool, I guess. Um, I feel like there was one other snark I had with it. Um, I don't know. It was a very goofy movie overall. I think. Uh, just, I mean, it's it's got like the the funny animation where you see Sonic like swinging on the bars behind Tails and Knuckles, who are just like casually flying. That scene was pretty good. Uh, the whole like metal sonic dynamic i didn't really understand but it wasn't like i didn't need to really understand it that well to to get it I, like it worked everything in this movie worked like all right i don't think anything was fantastic but certainly nothing that like shot the movie in the foot which was kind of refreshing um yeah i think the soundtrack was like infinitely better than the mario bros thing i don't know any like specific sonic songs but this gave me like enough of the vibe uh and it was like fun to listen to um the voices stopped bothering me after a while honestly i th i can definitely see how those voices could keep annoying me if the movie was like shit um but it wasn't so that was less of a complaint uh yeah, I mean, overall, it was it was a, a decent... I could definitely see how this is, like, an enjoyable movie for a kid. I mean, it's it, there's really nothing, like, glaringly wrong with it other than just the fact that it's... I don't know. I guess the plot is kind of the one inconsistency with all these movies. I think it was a little bit better in this than the rest of them. But it was still kind of all over the place. And I mean, there was one, there was a solid storyline that was easy to follow and that was able to follow, which was fine. But then there were like the little weird inconsistencies, like the the hostage woman thing, I guess, is the biggest one who I still am not like super sure how she fits into this plot or like what she was supposed to be. Uh, so that was kind of funky. Um, but beyond that and beyond like a couple other the little flutters the plot i think is fairly simple but straightforward enough it works it 
goes from point A to point B, uh, and it's paced like just about what I would ask of it. It's really, it's not fast paced. It's not, it's fast enough paced to be exciting and entertaining, especially as a kid's movie. Um, it's only 54 minutes, so for fuck's sake, thank God this movie didn't go on for two hours. Um, the pacing worked really well for it. Uh, ooh, that was a nice sneeze. I think, um, yeah, overall, it, a, a decent movie. It's goofy as shit. It's got the, like, kitty. I don't want to say insanity, but just, like, kind of confusion and simplicity. But I think that's fine, especially uh, as a kid's movie. Um, so, I think that this movie is going to be the first movie in a long time that I'm going to place higher than I thought it was going to be. And I don't know how popular this placement is going to be. Uh, I also might have gotten a completely different vibe from this than you guys. But, as for my initial opinion, I would place this movie... between bright and after earth and i i probably could go higher uh but i think that's a pretty solid initial place for it i definitely could go higher but we'll leave it there for now uh donnie you can go next wow this was quite an experience tyler had me scared about the voice actors going into this but maybe i've just been so shell-shocked from watching uh shitty anime dubs but uh <laughs> this is actually not that bad um i was really surprised at how just okay this movie was it reminded me of like the fucking of all things beyblade of how dumb the plot was and uh how okay the animation was which is kind of weird because i i really liked beyblade beyblade was like a huge part of my childhood and this is i don't know it's it's dumb and kitty the thing is it doesn't get any worse than that which is something i think is really commendable uh because boy have we been watching a lot of shitty movies recently <laughs> i got it um, there are some Korea, Korean animation moments throughout this movie, which are always just fun to laugh at. Nothing, like, super bad, but, I mean, when the animation really kicked off, it really kicked off. The, uh, Metal Robotnik and, uh, Metal Sonic looked really good. I especially liked, uh, Metal Sonic's, like, neon stuff. Like, when he would just have that aura around him, or have that, like, after image of himself. That actually looked really good. Um, Sonic running looked good. I don't know why Knuckles has a cowboy hat, but I mean, whatever. I kind of got over it. Also, Knuckles flies for some reason. Maybe... Apparently, he flies in the video game, too. That's not what I've played. He, like, uses his hands on the walls, I'm pretty sure, to climb up shit. At least, that was my, like, one experience with Knuckles. Um. The, the fact is, I think the only really weird thing about the plot was how chummy the captors were with Eggman. Which was also just really funny and kind of cute. How, uh, like, everyone was just kind of fine and hung out with Eggman. It, it didn't really make any sense, but that's kind of like what you expect from that kind of Saturday morning Japanese cartoon vibe. I mean, like, why did he kidnap, uh, people when he was the mastermind behind everything? And it also gets kind of unnecessarily complicated, just kind of like... It, it reminded me so much of Beyblade. Because everything is unnecessarily complicated, doesn't make sense, but, you know, kind of funny and okay for a kid's movie. All in all, 
it was surprisingly okay, and I'm kind of shocked. Uh, personally, uh, I'd probably. I think this might be crazy. I might go crazy with it. But I, I might put it above Godzilla 1999. Yeah. Surprisingly, not terrible, which was refreshing to see. Brody, hit me with it. I don't know. I mean, uh, it's more on point than the Mario movie, but there's like, you know, there's still little inaccuracies. Like, um, actually, you know what? Maybe Knuckles does fly in a few like games or whatever. I don't know. But like, I, I, I swear to God, I don't remember him flying being or being able to fly. Um, other than that, I think, I think it was an okay movie. Like if, if I were a kid, I definitely think this would be like kick ass. Um, the animation is a little spotty, um, as Donald pointed out in various uh, moments through the film. But um, I honestly kind of liked it. Um, I thought the character designs were good. Um, the voice acting was a little weird. I mean. You know, but like stuff like um, Knuckles sounding like it. I don't know. It's just some characters sounded like a bit off. Like they chose a voice actor that was like, I mean, appropriate for the character, but not quite right. Um, I mean, the story itself is OK. There's some moments, though, that really get me like. When um, Sonic has to stop the generator, then he gets trapped in the generator for two seconds, then it explodes, um, releasing Sonic, and that was all part of Eggman's plan. He also had to kidnap the ho or hold the president and his daughter hostage uh, for this to all work out. It's pretty, you know. It's a little pointless in some areas, but honestly, it's really forgivable. Um, I don't know. I think probably... Uh, I'd say top of D. Maybe even like below shark tails but i i yeah no i'm i'm just going top of d um this is i have i have warned everybody beforehand before going into this film that if there was one movie i was going to have huge nostalgia bias for it was going to be the original sonic ova um and well like to be honest with you when everyone was like saying that it was an e-tier i knew it was better but i wanted to keep everyone's expectations low because I didn't want to have a Lego clutch power situation, all right? I know this movie isn't amazing, but it, I knew it wasn't easier at the very least. Um, so, uh, but yeah, that's whatever. So, with the Sonic OVA, I feel like there's a lot of important things that I really have to mention. So let's get all the easy stuff right off the bat here. The animation goes is, is both really good and really bad on a lot of occasions. And, and a bunch of the times, it's just very middling. It's very obviously, like... Japanese anime inspired with how the characters react to comedy with how the characters get hurt and stuff like that It's got that slapstick humor that is definitely familiar if you've watched a lot of anime slice of life anime and stuff like that as well And I think it works for a lot of it because I think Sonic Eggman and friends are they have very expressive uh, Faces and they do a lot of fun stuff with them and in general I want to say that the animation is a lot of it's, it's pretty good They only reuse like three scenes in the entire film three animation things and they're all pretty short honestly so i have really no problem with it most of it's i mean all of it's original and it's all pretty good and there's legitimately scenes here and there that are very very well animated like when they're first running to the warp zone once they hit down on the surface that is a really fucking good scene um 
I think the I think a large portion of the fight with Metal Robotnik is great. The whole first round with Metal Sonic is really really good, um, and it's just like I don't know. It, there's definitely bad moments here and there. Don't get me wrong. There are moments where Sonic just looks like utter shit, um, but the good definitely outweighs the bad, especially with how well Metal Sonic and Metal Robotnik look at the close when they're close up and stuff like that. The glisten of the metal and stuff like that looks really really good. Um, the voice acting, for me, I knew you guys were not going to like it, but for me, this voice acting is super nostalgic. And number two, I think it kind of fits, because Sonic and his friends are kind of supposed to be on the younger side of things. And, and Tails especially, which makes it worse for him. I understand that his voice is fucking annoying, don't get me wrong, for a lot of people. And if you don't like the voices, it's fine. But this is, like, one of my favorite Sonic voices ever, just because how fucking ridiculous he sounds. And in general, I really, I think the only character that gets on my nerves is Sarah, because sometimes, like, when she's falling from the fucking car, and she's screaming, that shit is, like, ear grating, dude. I was like, ah, just hit the ground and go splat, please. Um, but if there's one fucking, I got it, nobody mentioned this, because I deafened during this scene, because I knew, because I thought everyone was going to shit talk me for it. Um, actually, no, I can't, I can't get to that yet, but it has nothing to do with voice acting. Um, so after the animation, after the voice acting, the story, I don't know, the story is super fucking simple, guys. I, I mean, like, I mean, Eggman wants Sonic to go down to his lab so he can get his data for his new robot, but he needs a way to force him down there, so he captures the president, and then he tells, so it's like, so like he has, like, leverage, and then he tells Sonic, hey, you have to go down there, because the robotic, Sonic would never listen to him if, if Robotnik just contacted him by himself. So he does all this shit, and then plus, it's also double duty because he wants to bone the girl. Uh, don't, I don't, 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 well, that's a thing that happens. Um, so, and that's, and then after that, basically everything just plays out on screen. Sonic gets captured, he gets his data captured by the generator, which was a ploy, and then he sends Metal Sonic to go off and do shit, and blow some stuff up, and that's what all there is to it. And as for, like, how Tails think, did it, he said that he already got it, he, remember Eggman gave him the watch earlier, and he says that, oh, this is made out of the same shit. This is Eggman stuff. I could use this to hack at the Metal Sonic. Yeah, it's dumb kitty bullshit. Don't get me wrong. But I think the plot is incredibly simplistic and honestly quite charming. This is definitely, like, one of the most faithful Sonic things I think I've ever seen in my entire life. It's charming. It's kitty. It's got a lot of laughs in it, too. I'm just, I just have a really good time with this film in general. Like, it, it also is helped by its very good pacing and the fact that the film itself is so short. And it definitely, it definitely needs that short length, too, honestly. Um, I don't know. I was never. I was. I don't feel like you could ever be bored with a movie as short as this and as fun as this. I mean, like for reference, A Town Called Panic is like seven to ten minutes longer, and it felt like an eternity. I feel like we have to get a lot of credit for that, man. The pacing is really, really good in this movie. It just does. It just shows a lot of creative stuff with you, and it also is just very fun and loving to the series in general with all the references and stuff like that. And yes, Knuckles can glide. He doesn't fl like fly like Tails, but he does glide with his dreadlocks in pretty much every game he's in. The ones that he doesn't do it, the only game that I'm pretty sure he doesn't glide, is like Sonic Heroes. He does it ever since his release. He doesn't end Yeah, but he was fucking superman in this Yeah, Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not saying he doesn't fly, but yeah, no, you're fair, but he does glide around with his dreadlocks. Alright, yeah, but alright. Okay. Um, that does happen. But it is a, uh... Oh, sorry, give me a second, but yeah, no, it, there's just a lot of faithful and fun stuff. I love all of Eggman's robots in this film. I really wish we got to see more of his generic, like, the guys with the big hammers for their hands. Because I thought they were really funny, and they had a lot of funny moments in general. Um, I just love all the creativity in this film. It's just really, really freaking... I just like it quite a fair bit. Now, uh, one last thing. The soundtrack is really fucking fun. I love it when the movie gives its soundtrack time to show off. And that's really felt in this film. The sax is fucking insane in this movie, and there are multiple times where they're just showing you beautiful scenery while the music's playing in the background. And then one of the characters starts talking, and then it gets ruined a little bit. But those like ten to fifteen seconds are pretty good. Like the opening when they're surf when they're first flying through the world of darkness, or when they're in the city for the first time. There's just so much good stuff, bro. I can't really. I mean, a I mean, a lot of it's personal taste, but I don't have too much hate for this movie. But then I have to talk about the ending, cause man. Uh, it pisses me off. As a kid, you gotta realize, as a kid, I played the shit out of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. And Metal Sonic was, like, my favorite fucking character. And it was real, and I remember it was really heartbreaking to watch him die at the end of the movie. I don't know why, as a little kid, but then I watched it back, and I realized how out of fucking nowhere it is for Sonic to give a fuck about Metal. It literally makes no sense. They have been fighting this entire time. And at no point is there any sort of development to Sonic giving a fuck. Besides him, like, saving the president and the bird dude, like, five seconds before he falls into the goddamn lava. 
Like, seriously, it's so out of nowhere, and it feels like it could actually be an incredibly emotional moment in theory, but it doesn't work here. Like, it feels like they threw an ending of a different film at me compared to what everything we've seen else before. It really annoys me because I remember being so sad when Metal Sonic died at the end of the f at, when I watched this as a kid. Um, and and I and I even even without the context, sometimes I just like to envision that scene at the end of a movie that gave it proper context, and then I get sad again because I'm like, oh no. But there's one thing that will ruin that scene no matter what I do, and that's Metal Sonic's stupid fucking voice. There can only be one Sonic! Like, I fucking- that shit is, like, up there with, like, fucking Ghost Obi-Wan with, like, just shut the fuck up. You could just let the scene play, and it would be a million times better. I hate it so goddamn much. It literally ruins it. I have seen clips on YouTube where it is just that scene, and they take out the voice line, and it is so much better. And I, I fucking hate it. I really hate it. Um, ugh, it annoys the shit out of me, dude. But, like, besides from that whack-ass ending, so maybe whack-ass animation, I really... Oh, yeah, you guys mentioned Sarah and the Robotnik. Um, yeah, it's weird. But I think the chummy na I think the chummy nature between the two of them definitely just fit with the lighthearted nature of the entire film. I don't really have much of a problem with it. I think Sarah's voice is a little annoying at a lot of points. And I, uh... What the hell was the second thing I wanted to say? About that whole shindig. I don't know. I, I think a lot of their moments can be funny. Sometimes Sarah's annoying, so, but she does. I think she does a lot of fun stuff too. I just hate how everyone's a little horny in this film too. She's definitely completely unnecessary, to be honest with you. If they took her out, th like the film would lose a little bit of its lighthearted charm. But I think it would honestly might have been for the better. It's kind of hard to tell though, honestly. Um, but uh, you know, anime cat girl. I mean, Sonic, Sonic, Sonic's tapping that, so I, I don't know how to feel. You know. Like, on one hand, she's not good for the film, but on the other hand, ah, oh, Sonic's tapping that! Sorry. Um, I don't know. I really, really, really like this movie, honestly. This is one of my favorites from my childhood. And I, uh, I don't have really too much to say with it. Say that's, like, super wrong with it. I mean, God, it's got problems, don't get me wrong. But to me, this is, like, just, like, the, like, a completely and utterly average film. I think that you can you can argue that there are there's a lot of shit that knocks it down to D, but to me there's a lot of pluses that are really unique to this film, with its like with it with its attention to detail. Like this is a this is a video game movie that actually is relevant to the video game. Like can we can we talk about that for a second? I don't think there's any other video game movie that's as good towards the series as the original Sonic OVA. Yeah, you can argue it's like oh well it's the, on Freedom Planet there's no like fucking. There's no, like, separation of the ground and sky or whatever. What about the Kirby TV show? That was pretty good. That was not a movie. This is a, pretty much a TV show. It's a two-episode TV show. It's, it's, and they combine into a movie. It, it, it is called Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie. It was only a two-episode right. thing in Japan, and then they combined it into a film. It's, Donnie, you can't compare, like, an, like, an, like a two-episode OVA to, like, a seasons long of Kirby. That's not a... It's not a video All game right. movie. It's not a video game movie. Uh, okay. And then I was going to say that the... Um, I don't know. The film is the film is too short for any of its shortcomings to really become, like, that big of an issue. I think it's purely average in the best way possible. I love the soundtrack. I love the lighthearted... I love, I love the lighthearted tone. I love how faithful it is to the games. I just... And there's a lot of animation moments that are really, really good, too. There are problems, don't get me wrong, but I think it evens out to a nice, perfect C tier for me, honestly. Now, it's definitely on the lower end, because I hate that ending so fucking much. Um, and because of other problems that are, honestly, maybe even a bigger issue. But for me, personally, I'm gonna agree with where Brody was too scared to place it. I'm gonna place it here, because I, as much as I fucking love certain scenes in King of Monsters, I think, in general, it is a way worse film all put together. Mostly because, in comparison, it is way god dude too, is way too goddamn long, and it is way it is, its characters are not passable or charming. They're just fucking flat out bad. Everybody that's not a monster. Um, as for the placement above Shark Tales, I do like this movie better than Shark Tales, but I know I'm not gonna get that position because Brody's a dumbass and Donnie's likes MC Hammerfish. So I'm not going to get that position, even though I think that's where the movie should be. But this is where I'll vouch for up here. I think this film is pretty good scenes here, honestly. Um, so yeah, that's all I got to say. Is my mic working? My mic is working, thank god. Alrighty, so how's everybody feeling? Scott, you're the one who rated the lowest. 
Scotty. Scott, man. He's dead. Did Scott die? Alright. I could talk. Sure, how do you feel, Brody? I mean... I feel that this was gonna be my initial, like, placement, though I kind of, like, dumbed it down a little bit to... Or, well, not dumbed it down. I kind of, um, reduced the, my, uh, placement a little bit, uh, just to kind of, like, test the waters. Yep. I'd say that is the appropriate placement of this movie. Mm. What you, uh, how are you feeling, Donnie? My original position is fair. What was your original position? Below Hancock. Below Hancock? There's just a lot of dumb fucking, you know, like, uh, anime shit in this movie. Uh, I don't know, like, what. But it's an anime, so, like, yeah. you gotta correct. <laughs> so that's what it's here for. Oh, this is coming Scott. from the non anime watcher. Alright, Scott. You were the person who placed it lowest. How do you feel? I know. Uh, so the placing contention is right below Shark Tale? Yeah. Mr. Me and Brody are putting it right now. Uh, I like Hancock more than this movie. That's the problem. I also like Hancock more than this movie. That's so Yeah, crazy. I'm gonna have to go with Donnie. Which is crazy. Hancock. Although, no, I could totally see this in C tier, though. Yeah, I wanna put this uh, in C Well, low. no, I, I think it's it's just too short to, I think to develop a, I think any, too, to develop any, like, better no i i the pacing wise it's good but like i get it's a kid's film but also like impact wise and like caring about the characters wise i think it's too short to develop much of that all right well here's my argument to that yeah. we on this tier list we generally accept that we don't need to have good characters with good arcs until like fucking a tier uh i know because i know you look at your b tier roster <laughs> that's such a funny statement yeah <laughs> no, but Hancock it's does just have good below a tier is like all right you don't even need characters. Just please. You don't. Please you don't. have some kind of plot. I have <laughs> Dude, look, look at look at all of these movies below B tier. Almost every single oh, one of them doesn't have crazy. any worthwhile characters or substantial growth. That's oh, God. Like what? Uh, maybe uh, Force Awakens, which is borderline. Not borderline, <laughs> but it's a B. It's like Finn, maybe. Spies in Disguise is. It's all right, I guess. Definitely not specific room. Planet of the Apes, but that film has a million other problems. Uh, like Independence Day movie. Like it's not. It's it's substantial characters and growth and and like is just not. Right now, if for B tier and below, you generally don't even need your characters to like have like like super compelling arcs. You just need to have them be charming and have them do what they do in this plot well. I'm not saying that that's a excuse. I'm just saying that it's generally not. I mean like fucking christ dude uh like hancock almost has an arc in his film and then it's completely thrown away nobody has an arc in 1998 nobody really had that an arc in king of monsters is like the character's so stupid that you don't even fucking want to watch it it's just like i don't i don't see that as a big ne negative to the film i wasn't going I into know. this film expecting I just... sonic to realize that he's gay I didn't need that. Yo, yeah. imagine though. T <laughs> Tails already knows he's gay. Yeah. Come on. He has every single thought that Sonic has, and then Metal Sonic goes up to him. He's like, "You are gay." Yeah. <laughs> and then they kiss. And then they kiss, and then he dies. Um. That was crazy that that actually happened in the movie. Yeah, no, that was good. That and was good scene. Why did they kiss here? Fuck him. Donald homophobic. Donald's homophobic. I am homophobic. Alrighty, well, no. that is... You I heard it here, folks. tier, below Hancock. Ah, God. Scotty? Uh... You know, I think I could do bottom of C tier. Not above King of Monsters, but bottom of C tier. That's fine with me. I'll take it. Yeah, that's well, fine. Well, no, you out... You... Alright. <laughs> I do like... You, you I basically like out... You do I do like Scott. Hancock better. I do like Hancock better, but we already know that's, like, a moot point, so... I. If I'm not factoring that in. Alright. Yep. That's, that's fine with me. You know, the only reason why... I already ventured why I don't like King of Monsters as much, but it's not really that much of a complaint for me because, you know, as much as I like this film and as much as King as King of Monsters does wrong, uh, one movie has Bird and Godzilla and the other does not. <laughs> um, like, Bird and Godzilla is, like, purely the reason why it's in C tier. 
<laughs> like everything else about the movie is is like fucking like terrible, like with pacing and characters. But man, does it have a cool final fight scene? Uh, I mean, like uh, all the other fight scenes are okay too. Um, but Jeebus Crisis, that is completely fine with me. I think this film absolutely fits at bottom C. Uh, I mean. It, it's 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 a mute point anyways because king of monsters is like borderline d for us anyways <laughs> with, with when, we, when we did a review on it so this is this is kind of whatever see see top bottom of c top of d it's, it's very close um i don't like the tyler's movies above my movies what is it i don't like the tyler's movies are above my movies i mean <laughs> I'm just, I'm just glad we watched a kid movie that was like worth watching. Something decent. God, it was so good to watch something like somewhat. I know it was like a, it was literally a brush of breath, brush, a brush yep, of breath. Yep, got it. Yep, a brush of breath, breath, dog, 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 dog. Brush of breath, air. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it, it's. What, what are you? What are your movies? Mario Brothers, Lego, and. Oh, uh, no, you haven't UHF. UHF yet. Well, you know, UHF yeah. is gonna place is gonna place higher than any of my movies. The movie is funny. Yeah, it's probably. Hey, at least, at least, at least, I have the record, right? What? Yo, F and yeah. and F and no, S and, and and S, yeah. But can we oh get? A, but can we get a perfect C? Can we hit like all three? <laughs> Dude, imagine. I, I don't know. Dude, I, I don't space even know. If space Jams. Jams is gonna be a C. God. I don't even know. Oh. Space, space Jams is like the dark void that we should avoid. Yeah. Like. So, space chimps like one of us is gonna die like during <laughs> yeah. it's not the watching it's movie. Back. It's like a ring. It's, it's like Russian roulette. One of us has to die. This, yeah. is, this is not all right. Um. So okay. Well, I'm. I'm. I'm it's space go. chimps next. Space chimps is next. The final. Order, the final order is space chimps, space balls, UHF, and we're ending off on an absolutely atrocious film in Cats vs. Dogs. Oh shit. Um. And then we're off to the uh, spoilers. We're off to the Marvel marathon. Um. Which should be fun. Where we we're get to get... watch. We're gonna get a lot of arguments over that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like we we'll all agree. I no, Marvel. we will not. Scott, no, we will not at all. I like as my, I before. I don't know. You know, we were arguing because we haven't seen these movies in, in a, a while. All right. Like time. after we see them, we're gonna Some, like be like, all right, all right. Some of them I haven't seen. Yeah, I'm just glad er, that we got a movie that yeah. we all predicted to be an E-ish. And it's it actually plays higher. I was just fucking. I have PTSD from <laughs> from Mario movie. I was. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, our hey, our hey, King Bowser. like like fucking crazy in, during this in, during this <laughs> this marathon. We got two I... two more E's and two more F's. That's how you know we had good child. <laughs> Wait a minute, guys. What? I just realized from the beginning of the Mario movie. The lady who was caught by General Koopa was never explained, and neither was General Koopa. That was his mom. Nope. That was her mom. Well, yeah. But... She's dead. Dude. Okay. It was fucking stupid. Yeah. Nice Wait, was that Peach? Maybe. Nice bringing that was... up, Brody. And... <laughs> that was really... All right, All right. I just <laughs> remembered. <laughs> Alrighty, we're done here. We got nothing else to talk about. So see you guys next time for fucking space chips. Space chips, yo, let's fucking go.